Listen up, world. Here it is, coming at you, low tech style. This is a Washburn WD-700 digital delay from the mid-1980s. Washburn is a guitar maker based in the United States, but this unit was made in Japan. I've changed the potential of the caps to blue and white coloured ones as I thought they looked better than the light green ones that were originally on there. I've used the white caps on the gain and level controls and the blue ones on the delay controls. The colour coding makes it easier to identify the controls quickly. If we take off the lid and have a look inside, you can see that there's quite a bit going on, unlike some analog delay units made around the same time that have much simpler circuits. There's some components that can be fine tuned by these screws highlighted now, but they're not labeled plainly, so I'd need to consult the schematics or just go by trial and error to work out which ones affect which parameters. Inputs and outputs for this device are on both the front and rear panels, making it practical for both studio and live use. Looking at the inputs and controls on the front panel, starting from the left. Firstly, there's the input, followed by the input gain control. Above them is a five LED level meter. Next to that is the delay time controls that are set with two pots. The first is a stepped rotary control labeled range. This sets the basic delay time from 2.5 milliseconds to 320 milliseconds. The control next to it is a continuous pot that modifies the delay time by a factor of anything between one half and double, or times 0.5 to times two. Using these two controls, the delay time can be set from 1.25 milliseconds up to 640 milliseconds. The unit has an internal LFO, which is controlled by the depth and rate knobs. Above that is an LED that flashes in time with the LFO rate. Next is the feedback control, which can already produce some wild effects and I suspect it can be fine tuned by turning one of the screws we saw inside. The final two controls set the output level of the dry signal and the effect. We then have three output sockets. The first is the direct dry signal, then the mix output, and finally the invert mix output. Whatever balance was set for the mix output, the opposite balance will come from the invert mix. So for example, if in the mix output, the dry signal was set to zero and the delay set to 10, then only the effect will come out of the mix output and only the dry signal will come out of the invert mix. Next to that is the hold button. Pushing this will infinitely repeat whatever sound is held in the unit's memory. Next is the bypass effect button. When the button is in, the effect is engaged and a green LED will light up to indicate that. Finally, there's a power button and a power indicator LED. All the inputs and outputs can be found on the rear panel, along with the foot pedal sockets for both bypass effect and hold. So, we'll start with the self oscillation test. Just an output connected, we'll turn up the feedback and see what happens. Usually digital delay units don't self oscillate unless specifically designed to do so, which this unit obviously has been. Okay, let's connect an input and see how it sounds.
So what do you think? How did that sound to you? Do you prefer analog or digital delays? Let me know in the comments. And if you've enjoyed the video and want to see more, please subscribe to the channel. Love tech, Love tech.